Ain't that gorgeous? Welcome to Sailing Vessel Seeker. We're going to work with some block and tackle. A little bit about pulleys. This is using a pulley. I already got a block up here and nothing down there. And there's no advantage here. So that's the whole thing you need to know about pulleys. This doesn't give you anything. So what I'm pulling down on is with the same force it takes to pick this up. No advantage. So one pulley just redirects. That's all it's doing. But it's real convenient. You can pull down instead of having to pull up on the load. But another pulley added to it. And I have to use half the force to pull it up. But look at this. Watch my hand. My hand can travel a foot. The jug only goes up six inches. I'm having to pull both of these in. So to calculate the advantage, you can't count the line that's just redirecting, but you get to count both lines that are actually going to the load. And if there's three lines here, you got three to one. If you got four lines here, you got four to one. Count the number of lines, take out the one that's just redirecting if there's one doing that. We're setting up a block and tackle for uh, three times the strength up there. Lee is back with me down here avoiding the ice and snow. You were here three years ago? Yeah. Oh, we worked on the hydraulics for the main engine. Main engine. Yeah. He's three generations fisherman. He is my go-to for what really works in hydraulics. Hey, Doug. Yeah, I'm ready. Hey, you want to put that block on too or should we do it in two parts? Let's do it to it two parts. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, how you? Okay, I need uh, slack on the line you pulled me up on, so you'll have to take it off the winch. So I'm take this halyard, put it over here, it'll become our spare, and the new halyard's gonna come back on this side. It's gonna have to be longer for the block and tackle. At the end of the new halyard, now the block for the new halyard. Awesome. Okay, the rigging is done and I like that very much. It should pull that yard up just fine. So we're on to the next job. So back here on the mizzen, we put temporary uh, brackets on and attached our blocks to that to see if we really wanted them out there on the end. And the answer is no, we don't. We actually want them further back in because you can see right now, the uh, lines for the sail have wrapped around the back side of the uh, davit. That's a snag. So we're gonna move them up closer and put them on permanently. And that is what Joel's working on over there. He's taking off the old ones. We'll use them as templates for the holes and then make some stainless steel ones. Now that we're sure where they need to go, we'll weld them on. So I'm going to try something new too. I'm going to try some uh, stainless steel wire in my spool gun here. I normally use this for aluminum only, but heck, if it works for stainless steel, we'll have a new tool. It's one of the sheaves we had up there on the mizzen and that's not good. That bearing is coming apart pretty quick. I mean, it still rolls and turns all right, but it won't for very long. Yeah, it's, it's free and spinning all right. I put some corrosion inhibitor on there, but it's gonna need to be replaced. This could just be a Delrin piece too, so maybe I'll take some measurements off of it and make one. Is that 
bit better? Did it burn up in the tip? Yeah. shape a line won't grab onto the back of this plate back here it'll just ride over the top of it good morning to you world so we're drilling holes for bolts and the bolts will uh, keep the sheet And how cold is it? Woo! What do you think? 65? 455. 55. Yeah, cold. No block and tackle on this sail because it can go all the way up just using the winch over there. This is Joel's last day. We haven't done any sailing. He's gonna have to come back for that. But I need to get the rain out of my sails and check the uh, yard on the main sail. It's a beautiful day for that. And the sheets came up just fine. I like the fact that we moved it in on the on the uh, davit some, the attachment point, because those sheets now are in from that line that runs across the sheet line that runs across this side. So when they come down, they don't land on top of it. That's an unexpected nice improvement. Forward uh, main. Yeah. So they're in order by where they are. It's always port and starboard on the sheets. Okay. What's the, what am I feeling? You're feeling the resistance of the motor over here. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I need, I need covers still. So the Mizzen is one to one. and there's, there's no block and tackle with this one. It's the two to one. With two lines coming down, they're both under load. The redirection is done up there in the masthead where that halyard goes up through a sheave across the top of the mast and back down the other side. Need a break yet? So this winch is two speed like the one on the aft deck there. If you turn it this direction, it's a lot of load but it's fast. Turn it this way, it's half the load and half as fast. So it's just like the block and tackle. You trade off how much force you put into turning it as to how much line comes through. You know, less force, less line. <sighs> I need to do this more often. Yeah, if you want, yes. I'll be happy to tab out. To, what's it called? Tapping out? Tag. Tag out. Well, well, as a consolation prize on junk rigs, you don't have to put the sail all the way up for it to start working as a sail. Each batten is kind of like a boom or the bottom part of a sail while it's in the lazy jacks at the bottom. So the rest of it will start working. Which is a cool thing about junks too. To reef, you can lower the sail as much as you want to unload the wind from it to make it right for the conditions. And then you either <laughs> build more muscle or you turn the engine on, flip on the hydraulics and send it back up. What'd you say? Slipping on the winch. Is it? Put another wrap on. All right. Uh, it's loaded up the winch good, but not nearly what it was before. The other thing to remember about blocks is, you know, you can't just add more of them and make your life easier. You're adding more line every time that you got to move in. And then the other thing is each, each sheave, each piece of the block adds about 10% roughly of uh, friction. So you just take your load amount and, you know, if you got four of them, it's 40% uh, more just because of all the sheaves. Yeah, we put a bolt in to hold the line, but the angle's too much. We're going to have to change that. So it comes right up. It's tight against the lazy jack, but that's holding it into the mass nicely. So we're going to leave it like that. 
I need to straighten these sheets out a little bit. And I need to snug this back Lazy Jack line up just a little. Joel just reminded me we need to move that Lazy Jack over. It's on the port side. I'm on the starboard here. And what's going to happen is this uh, yard is going to follow those halyards up. And it's going to get pinched too far over to the side. So we're going to shift that. This line right here is the halyard. We have it pinched off the mast right now with a temporary line. That's just to keep it from slapping against the mast so you don't hear that noise. But we have a spare halyard coming down here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that lazy jack line and run it through where the spare halyard is. But right now the whole sail bundle is sitting in the lazy jacks and that's what's keeping it from coming down. So we have to temporarily tie it up to the mast. So we put a piece of webbing around the bundle and around the mast and that holds it up there temporarily while we slack the lazy jacks. Now we take a little line make that a messenger for the lazy jack line. That way if we want to put a line back in that sheave up the top, it's no big deal. Oh, so you make a loop and then you pull the big line through. Mm -hmm. I like my method better. Okay. But this works. You're going to put the last one right out there on the end. It's mm -hmm. a lot of fiddling with it. I think yours is a lot of fiddling with it too. Do you? I don't think so. I think yours is more fiddling. Okay, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, yeah, you go overboard. Go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, now you're worried about it. Well, this is when it matters because now it's going to hold tension on it. couple of stitches to get them close together and then they're not going to be really close together here on the ends because we burn our ends and taper them down so you really can't run a needle through that melted plastic so what we'll do is we'll just use the thread to bind them together and then some blue painters tape to make sure they stay pointed to each other and make those ends behave themselves uh-oh oh there it goes That's good. One, two, three. Got it? Yeah, pinch it off. He is disturbing our peace. We need to bundle the sail, raise it up, and we take our strap off now. Okay. It's off. Mainsail here is three to one. So three lines coming down that all take the load. So the load of about 500 pounds is divided amongst those three lines. So the shackle there sees 500 pounds, but each line sees, oh, let's say 200 because we're counting for all the pulleys being in there. That would be a reasonable estimate. And then back at the top there again, it just redirects through the two sheaves at the top and the line comes down. So, so the advantage is this cheek block here only sees a third of the load it used to see. And Joel's going to get the bundle line off, so now the sail can go up. What do you call a flock of loons? A mob of lunatics. Oh, you like that noise? That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah. You want to take out. the handle out. That's a warning to everybody in the future. Remove the handle. Are you breaking a sweat yet? so bad. Yeah, Looks like she's tied up front. No, that's okay. Going up. It's just we move the attachment point way far back so that makes it pitch down more in the front. Yeah, that's looking good. Going right up between the lazy jacks. That's much better. Still need to add some chafing to those battens. So they have a piece of carpet between them and the mast. All right, got a lot more work to do back here when we decide where the sheets actually get adjusted through the UFRO and those blocks, but that's not too bad. Oh, I'm not sure what's holding that bottom batten up. Oh, the scrap of the lazy jack is snagged backwards, I think. Let me go up there and fix that. Okay, yeah, Lazy Jack may be tightened up a lot. Do you want that crutch down? Uh, no, I'm using it for right now. Or are you keeping it off the solar panels with that? Yeah. Wow, these battens really do have a bend to them. You know what, we're probably going to need to move all these sheets forward. Just like we did for the forward sail. Yeah? Yeah. These sheets, they're through rope grommets, and they're only about two feet from the trailing edge of the sail 
or the leech and that is putting a lot of bow into the battens so what will happen if we shift these attachment points further forward this span is shorter and it won't bend as much so if i look down that batten i can already see it bending it's just from the weight coming down but i know the wind's going to do a lot more than that yeah but how far i think i think we're going to move them up two of them i think we want to come two more grommets forward yeah it may be too much but I don't think so. Making a little adjustment to the Perel here to snug it up. The rest of them look good. When we finally get them overall happy with all of them, we'll uh, use lashing there. But until then, God, hose clamps work great. You like that better? Yeah, just snug, just like the others. Load looks good. A little bit of wrinkle at the top. I think that uh, top one is just a little tight. Shouldn't have any load on it hardly. Yeah, see? So we need to snug those up. I think I need to tighten the one at the rear. But go ahead and pull as hard as you can. Tighten it up. Yeah, that rear one's slack, so let me put a binding on it. I want to change these sheets up here some, but this line here, its angle out of the tulip sheave is steeper than I thought it would be, so it's catching on our bolt here. And I need to move the bolt back, so I'll probably weld on a little bit more metal back in here get the bolt out of the way but it's necessary to keep the the sheet or the line you know from coming off the tulip sheet when we uh, don't use this side which is half the time because we're double sheeted so one side takes the load the other side just lays slack and I don't want it to drop off that's what the bolts for but it's not in a good spot Matt and Joel and I figured out how to put a ladder up here that we'll like so I got something to do this week you know you sure you don't want to stay Katie won't mind. Another two weeks. Your employer, they won't fire you. I'll get back with you on it. Yeah, they'll fire you. You just tell them that you had a choice between cooking or uh, being a pirate, and uh, the choice was clear. Okay, let's drop it back down and see how the crutch works. Okay, let her down. Yeah, that's working good so far. There you go, unwrap it, just let it go, drop. Perfect. Yeah. Absolutely beautiful. Also think about putting a bungee strap up here. A lot of people talked about loops. I'm not ready to do loops yet, but that might be a solution too. But if I just had a little bit of elastic bungee between the outside edge of the Perel here and back to the batten, it would keep these taunter as they came down and that would stop them from overlapping each other. It's not a huge deal. But when it goes up, it's nice if they're stacked in proper order. Which means bringing these down and letting this one right on top. Yeah. All clamped up and ready to weld. So we've installed some braces, or what I call sweeps, at the corners of the solar panels. So when a line goes taunt, it goes up and over them and doesn't crab underneath there. Higher cheeks, bolt way up higher, so now the angle out of the tulip sheave can be really steep and won't drag on that. But it also won't let the line jump out. I've been saved from making my own sheave. I ordered these back in December, and they finally got here. And this is perfect. This is actually for a 5 8 inch rope, and we're only going to be putting it on a half inch. But man, I'm surprised it will fit a 5 8 This is a 5 8 inch line and yeah, I guess it's okay. They don't really care about the cover so much as the core that they're supporting. And the beautiful thing about this little Harkin uh, sheave is it takes 5,000 pounds of static load, which makes it perfect for the halyards. Because I think the bearing there in that cheek block will give me the same problem. And this is Delrin, so it definitely won't rust. But look here, the bearings, 
they're not what you think they are. It actually turns on this piece of stainless steel here, just like the sheaves do up on the top of my blocks on the main mast. Uh, and it's just the plastic ends against the stainless. That is the bearing surface. These ball bearings out here are for when it loads sideways. So if it pulls down a little bit like it will out there on the back, it'll come up against the cheek and it won't pick up any friction from the cheek. So interesting design. The bearing surface itself that takes all the weight is on that little piece of stainless and this piece of Delrin. So our rusted bearing up there, that's going to get changed out. Now that little center piece slips out easy, so instead of doing this over the water, I took one of my uh, spare cheeks and went ahead and assembled one of them together. A couple of washers on the side for those bearings, and it runs great. And I just bolt this on with quarter 20, so I can drop those in the water and not feel terrible. Oh, I got a better idea. I got to thread the pulley through the line, so do that back on the boat too. Came down here and did the switch because I don't even have to untie the other end of this line from the sail. Just right there in the middle. When I was a kid, we had a tree house in the front yard. And I remember, oh, I think it was for hauling deer up into trees, but I got a hold of a block and tackle. Made an elevator to go up in that tree house. Learned a lot that day. Never had so much fun. So maybe that's the thing. Go out and buy your kids a set of block and tackler. Just, you know, toss one up there in the limbs of the tree next to the neighbor's kids and see what they can learn. Anyway, that's it for this video. Thanks for joining us. What'd you make today? Get out there and try something. Maybe block and tackle. Mm -hmm.